So just got the Vision OS 26 developer beta, and I am impressed. There are some really exciting things in here, both in and of themselves, but also for what they mean for the future of where this is all headed. Uh, I tried to record audio as I looked at each of them, but the same thing happened to me with an earlier developer beta where suddenly my mic just stopped working. So I only have actual audio for the first clip here, and then I will go ahead and uh, provide some additional audio on top of my other clips. We're going to cover the new persona. We're gonna look at the new persistent world system, in particular the widgets. We are going to look at the new spatial scene setup and also the PSVR2 controllers. Enjoy. Okay, here we are with the uh, latest persona capture, a little glitchy in parts, but I do think it looks better than it did before. Uh, maybe because of facial hair, it still has a little bit of trouble with my mouth being closed. Like here, I am actually closing my mouth. So yeah, you can see uh, I got it for part of it, but I had my mouth closed that whole time and you still get a little bit of uh, teeth opening. The background's kind of nice. I like that um, if I change the background here, you know, it's it's just these. Oh, you can do a photo too, sure. Yeah, why not? Um, I'd add one, I guess. Uh, but cool. Oh, this isn't even a real environment yet. But this is all quite nice. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I look I look a little a little more aged and wrinkly, but it's it's basically there. The facial hair is good. Um, the shirt is kind of interesting. Like I, I'm wearing my Unreal Fest shirt. A little bit hard to see here, but um, <laughs> you can kind of see it there. Oh, jumping! Jumping is kind of interesting. How does it huh, How does it know I'm jumping? That's actually wild. Uh, cause you know, the, the headset is staying on my face the whole time, but I'm wearing an Unreal Fest shirt and it's kind of interesting to see that it got like kind of the text, but it's also kind of a smudged version. Uh, whoops. Anyways, um, cool. I'm excited to try this with someone spatially. Let's do a few quick, simple test things. Let me get closer. Maybe I can bring this closer to me also. Can I make you bigger? I can't make the settings window bigger. Weird. Okay. Let's try tongue. The cool. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, I don't know why the tongue always remains like the thing I'm most curious about with this stuff, but it it really just goes to show how detailed everything is. How <laughs> sorry for so much tongue stuff, but it's it's really interesting. Can I can I put my tongue up? Uh, can't really put my tongue up. Like I'm trying to touch my nose with my tongue. Yeah, it's not quite capturing that. Uh, but still, really good progress. I mean, these are objectively better personas than what we had before. I wish I could show you more of the side of my head. Um, what if I move this with me? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Ha ha. I'm doing a little turntable thing now. Cool. Okay. Uh, let's try going in a circle. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, but yeah, the side looks pretty good. Side looks pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that looks like my profile, which is pretty impressive because you don't actually capture your profile as part of this. Really interesting. Okay, uh, that's it for now. But Persona. <laughs> Fake smile. <laughs> Genuine smile. <laughs> Angry smile. <sighs> Okay, that's enough of that. Fun. Okay, and here we are with the new uh, persistent system that's in Vision OS 26. You can see here I've got a panorama on the wall there. I really love the little inset frames and how it really feels like it's kind of cutting into your services. But this was very easy to set up. These dolls just snapped my plane automatically. I threw in like Apple Music here. It gives you a nice little album art thing. Uh, we got notes. We got Apple News. Uh, we got pocket stuff. We got, you know, a lot of widgets that weren't designed for this. I think it's just taking the same widgets you'd have in iOS and just letting me snap to here, like ChatGPT and the weather and whatnot. And then I threw a couple of spatial photos over here. And uh, look at that, a little bit of occlusion. And as we go over here, you can see that I've got a couple spatial videos that um, actually feel three-dimensional. Like as I lean my head, you can see the fact that it actually feels like there's something three-dimensional going on in there. 
uh, which is not the same as the spatial scenes. We'll look at those shortly. But yeah, we can see on the left and the right, we've got these two scenes. Now, something to be aware of is that we've got something that feels like a slideshow when you first set this up, but you actually can't uh, cycle through any photos yet. You can select multiple photos, but it's only going to do one. Anyway, back over to here. You see we got all of our stuff over there. And as we kind of look over here, we have that nice occlusion again. Uh, again, no, no extra work to do this. This is just how the room is automatically being mapped and uh, just nice little touches like that to happen automatically. And so now over here again, just looking at how everything was very easy to place in the corner. I don't love that if you accidentally click on something, it shows you, you know, maybe too many other windows. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to something like Apple News, it's just like, hey, you should subscribe to Apple News. That part's a little bit annoying. But in general, I find this to be a really cool setup. Um, I did test actually turning off the headset or opening other apps and coming back to this, leaving the room, etc. It's all still here. Super, super cool. Uh, I really am excited to start to build content and experiences that take advantage of this in a meaningful way. I'm excited for how this starts to work with co-presence. I love this panorama effect here. I think it's even better than the spatial photos because you really feel like there's a whole world out there. And of course, changing the height of where that window is makes a really big difference. But yeah, comparing that also to the actual view outside the window below is pretty nifty. But how exciting for this to start to become like a real sort of memory palace for, you know, my world. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to set this up for multiple locations as well, a home location, an office location, you know, set it up in a hotel room. It's great. And here we are looking at the PlayStation VR 2 controllers. I did not expect these to work out of the box. Now what's interesting is the left side is actually paired right now. And you'll notice that there's actually some pretty good occlusion that comes along with it out of the box. Um, but I'm gonna try to pair the right one now. I'm gonna hold down the share button and the uh, whatever bottom button, the same way I'd pair a normal PlayStation controller and it shows up there. And if we give it a minute, we'll go from seeing just my hands being occluded here and the yeah PlayStation controller being kind of another occlusion object to now, here we go, it's starting to recognize that those controllers want to also be noticed. Aha, and then we have this nice little blurring. We have these kind of like circle portals now that cut through the immersive environment into this reality. So I can see the controllers, which is pretty cool. I expect that will be, uh, we'll see more of that coming soon, which is pretty cool. Now, uh, the controllers are working, but there's just not a lot to do with them yet. There's no apps that support them, to my knowledge, even the ones that were set up for the, uh, other, uh, the other controllers that came out recently. But, you know, I can, I can bring up my home menu. I can use the trigger to click on things. So, similar to a regular PlayStation controller, I've got some ability to kind of move around and uh, activate the experience here. Yeah, I just thought I'd try to see if any of my previous apps uh, might work with these, but they don't. Uh, anyway, excited to see if I can get these working, especially in Unreal Engine. This is crazy. Flat image, not a spatial image. Now, when I click this up here, the spatial scene it's gonna do, absolutely nuts. I mean, there is so much going on in here that it shouldn't be able to figure out. I mean. My God, okay, so it blurs out if my angle gets too wonky. But, like, there's uh, stuff on the glass. There's, like, refractive water droplets on the table. There's refraction in the glass there. My kid's nose is, like, 3D. There's something kind of weird going on with his pinky finger there. It's like there's, like, foam coming off of it or something. Uh, and the, the straw, the straw is totally off. <laughs> Look at that, the straw disconnect there. Uh, and his thumb, yikes. But like the hair strands, the, the sense of the depth, the little string on his red shirt there, it feels like it's coming out. Like that has depth separate from the rest of the shirt. I mean, this is wild. This is miles ahead of uh, what a spatial photo does. And I, I'm willing to forgive my child's detached thumb there. But like, yeah, just the top of that like milkshake. Um, my God, my God, holy cow. And the refraction of the glass there. This is totally nuts. Um, let's try, oh, fine, let's try my headshot just because it's right there. <laughs> There's an old, old photo at this point. Let's see what happens when I try to spatialize that. What's it gonna do, what's it gonna do? Ah! <laughs> oh, that is crazy. That is totally nuts. Oh, yeah, look at my beard. My beard is um, blending into my shirt. <laughs> 
Uh, but the three-dimensionality of this, oh my God, my, my wrinkles, my little smile lines there, my hair, um, the backdrop behind me, you have no idea that I'm just uh, <laughs> standing in front of a little panel at a conference at USITT. This is crazy. I mean, this is this is really nuts. You gotta you gotta see this to believe it. I mean, it's in, it interp- interpolating, extrapolating so much data from just a flat image. Holy cow! I'm impressed. And now just to do a really quick uh, other image where you can really see the artifacts from the splatting. I kind of love it, but you see like a person dissolving into particles. And over here, yeah, this is the room where um, Cameron did set up his award-winning piece in the current of being at South by Southwest. And we can just see that there's a whole mess of stuff happening behind us. But it's fascinating. You know, it's the first pass at this kind of splatting that happens from a single photo. But compare that with this actual spatial photo from this dessert my team got for me uh, on my birthday on, on Friday. And this was super, super cool because uh, unlike when you do a flat video and convert it, or sorry, when you start with a spatial video, it, it feels kind of threed off. Like you've just got the left and right eye feeling 3D. And as you move your head, the 3D kind of moves with you. But yeah, this is a really solid splat. The splats that come from spatial photos seem to be miles ahead of the flat ones. And everything about this is great. I have no critiques of how perfect and luscious this dessert looks right now. Um, and the scale of it's great. Like I just feel like I'm tiny, tiny. This is also cool too. If you go into immersive mode, then it is only possible to see actual views. So you don't get a, that effect where the image blurs out because it doesn't like the angle you're looking at it from. The immersive mode here is great. So yeah, that looks really good. Um, I highly recommend converting some of your spatial photos from your iPhone or your Vision Pro into these spatial scenes. I love this so much. Anyway, that's what I've got for a preview for you right now. I hope you enjoyed that and follow me on this channel for more Apple Vision Pro news and stuff. Cheers. Goodbye. Hi, my name's Johnny.